please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Okay, it's a good looking screen uh, as far as the market is concerned. Uh, the one index which is uh, actually shooting through the roof like yesterday and this week is the metal index. It's showing up on the nifty with a half a percent dot gain. You're with us here on a fresh new edition of Trading Hour. I am Prashant Nair. With me is Ekta Batra. I mean, uh, uh, Ekta, I mean, metals, PSU banks, infrastructure. And I think I've counted these three sectors as the top gainers for four out of the five days this week. Yeah. I mean, so incredible. Yes, absolutely. And not to mention that we are back at record highs for the Nifty today. So at around 10,562. But it's a good start to 2018 as well. Yes, we did see that sort of volatility on the 1st of Jan. But that was probably because of the lack of volumes and participation. So on a, at current reckoning and not counting what could happen in the second half, the Nifty is up around 0.6% this week. And we've seen that mid-cap outperformance, which was really a marquee kind of uh, trend of last year continue as into this week as well. So the mid-cap index is currently up around 2.3% as compared to the Nifty on a week-to-date basis. Lot of stocks in focus. So Yes Bank, for example, is topping the charts in terms of the top Nifty gainer up 4 odd percent. Tata Steel, a lot of the steel stocks have done this uh, very well this week. So that stock up around 2 odd percent. Coal India up around 0.8%, up 6% this week. And something like BPCL, which is sulking today and sulk this week as well. And Idea Cellular, look at that gain that we're seeing on that one post the brokerage upgrade which has come through so that stock up around 10 odd percent but we do have a lot to talk about in terms of the technicals of the market as well I'm sure there are a lot of trading ideas today uh, Mitesh uh, joins in to discuss all that and more uh, so Mitesh morning uh, well it seems like it's a good trading session this Friday what are you telling your clients for the nifty as well as the broader markets uh, good morning Ekta. Uh, see, what is happening is that we are very close to the 10,550, 560 zone. We've had an intraday high today. But today morning was a gap of opening and typically gaps can see follow-up. So despite the fact that, you know, we are still uh, kind of uh, angling around the 10,550 mark, I think there's a stronger chance that we'll see a breakout. So I think if somebody wants to trade Nifty, keep uh, a stop loss just below yesterday's high of 10,510. And I think 10,650 and then 740 should be the new upside targets. Uh, Mitesh, I'm morning. Uh, in terms of stocks? Yeah, so I have two buy calls. Very clearly, uh, the trading is still on the positive side. I, uh, IDFC is a buy with a stop at 61 for targets of 67. And both IDFC and IDFC Bank and number of banking stocks, I think like Ekta was highlighting Yes Bank, are clearly showing breakouts on the short-term charts. So that's a buy with a stop at 61 for targets of 67. And Kajaria Ceramics is a buy as well. Keep a stop at 740. Look for 785 as the target. <coughs> Okay, uh, Mitesh, let's get talking about a couple of Twitter queries now. We have a couple of uh, questions coming in. The first one is Vinay. He has 100 shares of Force Motors, which he's bought at 400 rupees. And he wants to know whether to hold or sell that particular stock. So uh, I think Force Motor had recently had a correction. It made a low of around 3,000. I think that is very important uh, medium to long term support zone. So I think keep the stop loss below that. And I think it's uh, possibly reversed from there already. And I think the next target, which will look for the upside, if somebody is looking at a few months of holding period, which is about uh, 9 to 12 months, I think the stock could, can easily retest the recent or the 52 week highs of around 4,500. Okay, we have another uh, question. Uh, and this is from Rajiv. He's 5,000 shares of Jain Irrigation, uh, bought at 104 rupees. His time period is three months. Uh, what should he do, hold or sell? Mitesh. Um, I would suggest to hold. I think very clearly this is one stock, uh, especially, you know, we are hearing things about rural things happening in budget, etc, 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 etc. But I think on the chartical side also, I think the stock is ex doing extremely well. Though there's some minor pivot at 137, 140 zones, my sense is that in the next few months, the stock should minimum do a target of around 160 to about 170, maybe beyond that if the holding period is slightly longer. So clearly hold and uh, now I think the stop loss can be trailed to levels of 120. I don't think 120 will be broken, but stronger chances that 170 will be hit in the next three to four months. Okay. Mitesh, before we let you go, I just wanted to ask you about two or three stocks. Uh, yes Bank, which is up 4%. What would you recommend on that? BPCL, which has lost around 7 odd percent this week. And even something like an idea, which is up 10%. Yeah, yes so Bank, Bank, BPCL, was a... idea. 
Yes, Bank, what was the recommendation today morning? I think, you know, getting past this 318, 320 zone, which the stock was consolidating in. So we saw the stock do a range of about 318 to about 300 for last one month, and now it's given a breakout. So it was a buy at about 323. I would still be a buyer in case you get 3, 4 rupees intraday dip, add more. I think the stock is heading towards targets of around 340 to about 340, sorry, 343 to about 347. And beyond that, good chance that 365 can happen. So I think the stock is clearly starting an uptrend today use any dips to buy into it uh, buy into it uh, idea uh, i think the stock again you know with the new slow and the gap up opening is very close to the earlier highs of 120 uh, it made an intraday high of 119 today so i think around those levels you will see supply emerge 120 was the level where stock peaked out in feb 17 so i think you know uh, good good chance to take profits over there i forgot the third stock sorry uh, okay uh, bpcl sorry bpcl bpcl uh, yeah, this one, you know, looks very tricky. Uh, the stock is at uh, support levels of 490, but the chart pattern is very weak. And uh, as you rightly said, it's been declining for the last few days. I think eventually 490 will be broken and the stock will head towards 465, uh, 460 zones. And beyond that, I think, you know, there, there could be more correction happening. So I'm not very positive on uh, either of the uh, the refining or the oil marketing stocks. And uh, this one, I think below 490, it's just starting to drop below those levels. I think it's clearly heading towards 465 as the first target. All right. Uh, thanks very much, Mitesh. Appreciate you joining in. We'll uh, chat with you soon again. Let's get some FNO strategies now. Krish Subramaniam is uh, with us, uh, and he's uh, co-head equity advisory at Aldermont Capital. Krish, uh, what would you trade? Good morning, Prashant. Uh, well, we have had a pretty volatile week, and uh, we, we saw some tentative beginning, but seem to be ending uh, pretty strong. So uh, keeping the mood in mind, uh, though the broad trend remains uh, pretty strong. We are recommending bull spread in um, Bank Nifty, which has uh, shown pretty good momentum. So one could do a uh, bull spread between uh, buy 25,500 strike call and sell a 25,800 strike call, and uh, the red cost comes to about 110. And uh, the, 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 we are keeping a target of 190, and maybe one could keep a stop loss of 70. And stock specific again, couple of bull spreads. Uh, LND Finance, now that sees some pretty decent correction, but uh, uh, I think the segment seems to be again uh, picking up in action. So LND Finance, uh, one could possibly buy a 175 strike call and sell a 190 strike call. And uh, the net cost comes to about 4.30. The maximum gain that uh, one could get is about 10.70. Uh, 10, uh, 10 uh, and one could keep a stop loss of two. And the last one is a bull spread again on Bharati. Again, the telecom stocks could come back to momentum. Bharati has seen some pretty decent consolidation in the 515, 525 zone. So therefore, one could buy a 530 strike call and sell a 560 strike call. So net cost comes to about uh, 12 uh, uh, to 11. Uh, the maximum gain that one could get is 19. And uh, maybe one could keep a stop loss of 7. Okay, all right, Krish, we're going to let you go on that note. Thanks uh, very much for joining in and taking us through all of those strategies. But uh, the, the one stock which really stands out in today's trading session has to be IDEA. The company did approve fundraising yesterday, and there is a CLSA upgrade which has come through today. In fact, it's an upgrade all the way to a buy from a sell. So that's quite a jump there in terms of what they're recommending to clients. And we have Ronit telling us more about uh, what the details of that particular report is and what is their rationale for such a huge upgrade. Yes, Ekta, as you said it, you know, they've upgraded from a sell to a buy and they're given a target price of 130 and they're given a couple of triggers going ahead. So first, they're saying that the idea of Vodafone combined entity could see deleveraging of up to $5 billion led by capital infusion by both the parties. Remember, idea has a debt of around 56,000 crores and Vodafone itself has a debt of 60,000 crores. Moving on, they're saying that the idea of Vodafone merger will now happen in H1 FI18 compared to what was early speculated to the end of, you know, FI18 going forward. So that is one trigger. Finally, they're saying that synergy is worth around 1700 crores will happen as soon as the merger happens and synergy is worth around 14,000 crores will happen by FY23 itself and going into the financials they expect an EBITDA CAGR of around 38% for FY19 to FY21 and they're saying with ideas cut in gearing and early closure merger they expect more positive news going forward for idea moving on Vodafone came out with a statement saying that you know the idea fundraising will strengthen the combined balance sheet of the merged entities as well as they expect to receive around 1,500 150 crores from the Aditya Birla group going forward. 
Well, it's up around four tenths of percent currently for the Nifty. One particular parameter that we've been tracking throughout 2017 and now into 2018 is inflows into mutual funds. So for the month of December, it seems as though the inflows have eased versus the recorded levels or the record levels that we saw in the month of November. But 2017 still continues to be a year of record inflows when it comes to the DIIs. Prashant is here to give us all of the data for the month of December as well for 2017. Prashant. Oh, absolutely. Let's just tackle the month first and uh, then we can talk about the full year, calendar 2017. Uh, so as always, we kind of sort of break up the monthly inflow number into two parts. One is equity, I mean, which is plain equity. Uh, plus equity ELSS and the second uh, is uh, inflow into balanced funds. This is money which has gone into uh, equity mutual funds, uh, these categories in a particular month. So these are the numbers. Uh, so bas basically what happened is that uh, uh, November, I mean basically August and November, we got 20,000 crores plus in terms of inflows. Uh, and uh, uh, in in the month of December, which is the last, which is the latest month that we're talking about, inflows have actually slowed down to about sixteen or thousand crores or so, uh, and uh, you know, it, uh, it it is a big, it, it it is a substantial slowdown, uh, so to speak. But I think when you put together, and the next plate will show that when you put together this plus the balance flow, uh, then you know the slowdown doesn't seem all that. Uh, meaningful so balance uh, uh, inflows into balance funds have actually grown into uh, grown to an all time high uh, so they took in 9756 odd crores or so in the month of december which is uh, an all time high and which is about 2000 crores higher than what they saw uh, in the month of november so you put uh, plain equity plus balance fu balance funds uh, and you get a uh, you, you know pretty much a near all time high kind of number although a little bit lower but the difference is not as large uh, it seems when you look at just the plain equity number. Now the full year, I mean, it's actually just been as, uh, uh, astounding. I mean, take, just take a look at these numbers. Uh, One lakh fifty-two thousand crores plus is what uh, equity funds have taken in uh, in the month uh, of uh, in the in the year of 2017. This is basically what three times what uh, you know equity funds took in in 2016. Uh, I mean, in dollar billion numbers, we're basically talking about $30 billion being taken in by equity mutual funds in 2017 compared to what, $10 billion uh, approximately, which came in into these schemes in 2016. So, I mean, December has seen a bit of a slowdown. I think January numbers as we start 2018 will be closely watched. But I think one thing is sure, we're coming off after a spectacular year for these schemes in 2017. Back to you. Yes, absolutely, Prashant. Well, uh, let's see whether this kind of interest continues into 2018, but uh, it is, however, expected to. But uh, let's get talking about what's happening in the commodity and the currency space. We have Manisha joining in to tell us what she's tracking there. Well, Manisha, over to you then. Morning. Morning, Ekta. Thank you so much for that. Well, it is about the metal space, which has continued to buzz on the higher side. As we have seen in the recent many times that it is one or the other metal because of strong fundamentals, which continues to do well. So what really has been outperforming in the recent few days has been the copper prices trading at a new four-year highs in the Asian markets right now. There are supply concerns from South America. The, imo uh, the import demand estimates from China, of course, have been increasing. China in the recent days has been talking about also slightly slashing quota on import of uh, scrap there. The, or if you look at the TCRC numbers, those are down by nearly 8% for the first quarter of 2018. And that clearly tells you that the supplies are dwindling, the demand is still on the higher side, and that is taking the prices higher. So we have, uh, we are trading Asian markets on the higher side. The Indian markets, of course, also taking the rupee appreciation into calculation there. Uh, let's also uh, get in Tapan Patel then to talk more about the strategies there. Tapan, hi, what is your sense when it comes to the metals as a sector and especially copper, which has been doing better every day? Yeah, hi, Manisha, good morning. Yes, we've seen a good rally in copper since last couple of weeks. The price have touched 465 and 469 levels in recently and have declined uh, from that level. So we can see some correction from current levels and uh, 463 can be a good resistance for copper prices. Overall fundamentals are still bullish. The supply concerns are there. Inventory levels are at lower levels. So we can expect a uh, overall uh, bullish uh, trend in the longer term. But I think 453 is a good support to go long uh, again. And that, that, that can be a short term support for the prices. So we can expect correction till 453 and can go long from 453. 
453 towards a target of 470 and 487. Hmm. Tapan, it isn't all, only about copper because we've seen uh, multi-year highs in lead prices recently. Zinc has been trading around those multi-year highs as well. How do you look at the rest of the metals? I think barring aluminum, which has been under some pressure, the other metals, of course, have done quite well. Yes, among the all metals, I think lead and zinc prices have performed very well, especially zinc prices. But uh, for, uh, as of now, we can see we can see a good buying in lead prices because of the higher winter demand for uh, batteries. So we can see a good buying in uh, lead around 163, 162 levels for the target of 165 and 167. So buying around 163 is a good uh, opportunity to go along in lead for the target of 165. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as we are nearing the close of first week of 2018, it has been a good one actually, especially when you look at the crude prices holding at two and a half year highs, even the gold prices which gained quite uh, strongly in the oh, New York session overnight there. Starting with crude first, what is your sense there? Do we see the you know performance that we saw in this week repeating itself in the next week? Yes, I think crude will continue the uptrend uh, in a near term and $65 can be a good resistance level for the prices. We can see good buying on the correction levels uh, because uh, slightly uh, uh, ease of concern about the supply uh, deficit and that's why we can see some correction towards uh, 3900, 3870. But I think buying in uh, uh, deeps is a good uh, uh, opportunity for the crude oil price because the unrest in Iran and the uh, strong OPEC compliance are still the bullish factors for the prices. Mm. So I think 3900 can be a good buying opportunity uh, for the target of 39 and 4030. Before we let you go, what's your sense on gold? Because not only did we start this year above 1300, we are holding above 1320 right now. So it's been a good $20 of a jump up in this week itself. Yes, I think gold prices will continue up trend and we can expect 1340 uh, levels are a good resistance and we can see uh, more buying coming in because of the weaker dollar. Also, the, in addition to that, uh, the lower bond yields are also pressuring the dollar index which can support the gold prices uh, in the near term and hence so buying on deep is advisable for the gold also.